Hello, this is Lady Boulay, and thank you for clicking on the video. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your comments, and thank you for your thumbs up. I'm going to show you a video of a young black American woman who really gets it, who knows how to show respect and grace to other people while still respecting her own lineage and her own heritage. We, black Americans, are continuing to have the problem making people understand that we are Americans. There is no place in Africa for us. There is nobody in Africa waiting for me to come to see them. And there's nobody over there that I need to go see. So if we can ever get to an understanding about that, we might be on our road to communicating in a more profound and meaningful way. So I'm gonna let you watch this video and then we'll talk on the other side. This is a message for black people, as are all of our messages. I've been thinking a lot about the concept of back home. Like, you know, sometimes when I talk to people from the West Indies or from the continent, people will say, oh, you know, back home. And for those of us who are black American, we, we just don't have that. I've been to the continent of Africa several times. I've been to Zambia, I've been to South Africa. I have not yet been to West Africa. Really want to go. And although I feel deep kinship, like a really, really, really deep kinship, I, you know, I don't, I don't like to claim that I'm from somewhere where I don't know the culture and I don't know the language. So I definitely don't feel like I'm from there by any means. I think the closest to probably like back home that I feel having grown up completely in the Northern United States is probably when I go to the Southern United States, like when I go to the South. And still though, that comes with a huge history of racism and enslavement and Jim Crow laws. So it still comes with like a history of white supremacy. And I really think that that's a huge loss. Like it's something that I wasn't taught to grieve growing up or like as a child. And like, I really think it's, it's something to grieve. It's really incredible to me what black people have, like what black Americans have created in spite of, but that in spite of is so strong. Like it's such a trauma. And I recently, I mean, fairly recently learned this term like the Ma'afa to describe the African Holocaust. And I really, I really think that that's a term we should be talking about way more, if not in school, at least in our homes, like in black families. And I know that second generation West Indian, you know, kids and African kids don't always have that connection to their, you know, home, their back home. Um, so I want to, I want to acknowledge that, but also to not have it at all feels like it feels crazy. It's like a really, really devastating thing that I wish we just talked more about. Like there's a yearning that I feel like I have for that. There's also just the fact that like, you know, people have land there still. They have ties there and there's like a little bit of a place to go back to. Although I realize that colonization totally destroyed much of that. Or I should say colonization very, very understandably made people feel like they needed to leave and get out of there. And I just wish we talked more about the trauma that Black Americans have historically experienced. I would love to know what your experience is thinking about that as Black Americans, as Africans, as West Indians. I just want to acknowledge that, of course, people in the West Indies and South America also have a history of enslavement. And I definitely still notice a difference when people come from a majority Black country than coming from, you know, the U.S or Brazil. See, do you see how she respectfully tried to include everybody, West Indians, Africans, Brazilians, Latin Americans? You see, that's class. That's showing class. Getting up, trying to show off and trying to throw off on everybody. That's really low vibrational. It really is. But back to what she's saying about back home, she said she was brought up in the northern part of the United States. Quite possibly, her grandparents or great-grandparents were a part of the Great Migration from the South to the North. Many of us have family members in the North, so we go up North to see them, and they come down South to see us. But so many of them left the South with, with such a bitter taste in their mouth about the South that they didn't want to come back and they didn't want to talk to their children about it. Black Americans really don't like to talk about the trauma that our foreparents went through. 
it's really something that I think they're trying to, I think the, I think black parents have tried to protect their children from the humiliation, from the pain and the trauma. But she's saying now is the time to talk about it. I really like the idea that she hasn't brought into the propaganda that there's some place in Africa that's her home that she doesn't know where it is and that she doesn't know that that's where she's from. So I like the idea that she said that I don't want to claim a place where I don't know anything about the culture. Her culture is here and there is a back home in the South. If they left the South in anger or they left because they had to get out of Dodge very quickly, then they did miss something because the South has grown and developed so much that it, it's much better and much different than it was when people left in the Great Migration because they really just couldn't get anywhere. But a lot of black families have land here and a lot of them that moved to the North still have land and connections down south. I think that I have mentioned this before, but I go to the plantation houses in the south because they're still making money off those houses. Those tours are not cheap and they'll take you all over the house and they'll tell you about this and that, but they eventually get around to talking about the slaves because that's the real story of those houses. Occasionally, I have been at one of those slave houses and black people will just be walking around and then eventually they'll start talking to me because not many black people go to those slave houses. And I will find out that their family moved away from, from the South many years ago and didn't really give them a lot of details about the South. So they're back down South. They don't have any family left down here now, but their, their family roots are in the South. And they are asking questions about the South. I even had one young lady from Washington State to say that you guys have it better than we have it out West. Because down here, they let you know they don't like you. You know what you're dealing with. But out there, you can't tell. I did not relate to that at all. She sounded very convincing. But People are of the opinion that black and white people in the South just, you know, hate each other in peace. It's not that cut and dried. But I understood what she was saying. We know where we stand with each other in the South, so we don't fake it. So her family might have missed out on the back home, but the back home is here and thriving and doing well. But I just wanted to show an example of how a black American approaches something. Now, not all black Americans, because now we've got some very angry black Americans talking about tethers and things like that. But the classiest way to handle a situation like that is to have respect for yourself and who you are. And when you respect yourself and who you are, it's not hard to respect other people and who they are. So that's something that, you know, we can all think about going forward. All right, y'all, thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and have a good evening.